Seven days have gone by and God has given us another opportunity to bring to you art and leisure. This program celebrates creativity in the arts. We show you tourist sites, recreational centers, and other places of interest you should visit at least once in your lifetime. We also showcase weddings, birthdays, and other events. Now, let me give you a lineup of today's show. There's a joke. We have a peep into the activities of the National Troop of Nigeria. There's a report on Oya South's fourth lecture. And then there's also a report on the 50th wedding anniversary of Elder and Mrs. Obuagu Kalu. My name is Chioma Okwara. It's both my privilege and pleasure bringing art and leisure to you. So, stick around. I just came back from the States, like Delta State. <laughs> But well, you know, the truth is this, I, I fly a lot. But there was one, I, I'm not going to mention their name. I entered this aircraft and I sat down. It was a free ticket, it was a, a, a business class, it was free. Don't think I bought it. And I sat down there. The pilot walked into the aircraft and saw me, hey, you recognize the basketball. Oh, you're flying with us today. I said, yes, sir. Nice, nice to see you. I love your jokes. Oh, so, yeah, where are you flying to? <laughs> Say, pilots, you don't know where we live. <laughs> so let me take a course out of you. Okay. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. The National Troop of Nigeria is a parastatal under the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and National Orientation. Do you know why the federal government decided to have an agency that celebrates our cultural heritage through dance, music and drama? I went to the National Troop of Nigeria's office here in Lagos and I was told an interesting story which starts this way. Hubert Ogunde, who is best described as the father of Nigerian theater, started his career as a teacher. Later on, he joined the Nigerian police force. In 1944, he produced his first folk opera, The Garden of Eden and the Throne of God. The huge success of the production spurred him on to write more operas. He founded the Ogunde Consort Party in 1945. His death on the 4th of April 1990 at the age of 73 created a vacuum. The National Troop is a baby that got born out of the uh, necessity to continue after the death of uh, the first artistic director, uh, Chief Hubert Ogunde. Hubert Ogunde started the Osasa experiment in 1986, 87. He toured with the, uh, the maiden player Ayomo. And uh, after the national tour, it was discovered that there was a need for a formal establishment of a troop called the National Troop of Nigeria. In spite of our multinational uh, entity as a nation, there should be one troop that should unify all of us, that should draw participants from all parts of the country. And this particular expression found uh, support from government. The formal national troop was established in 1991 by Decree 47. In 23 years, the National Troop of Nigeria has lived up to its mandate of showcasing the country's rich culture through dance, music, and drama. The National Troop of Nigeria is the apex performing arts institution in Nigeria. The National Troop is not restricted to government functions alone. We can service any client who has the capacity to fund our logistics, which is in most cases very, very minimal. Young people aged between 5 and 22 are catered for through the agency's Children Creative Station.
Of strength of 140, the national troop has put up brilliant performances on the international stage. A good example is what we did in China recently, uh, towards the end of last year, we were in China during the Nigeria China Cultural Week, and I can tell you that up to today, the impact of our performance in China is there. And uh, before we went to China, we were in Greece. And the ambassador, the Nigerian ambassador in Greece, who, who is, is working very tall because of what we exhibited. He boasted about our coming and we did not disappoint him. As the country marks its 100 years of existence, practitioners are rehearsing for a major centenary outing. Everything we are doing this year is going to be geared towards telling the Nigerian story from uh, masters to what we are today and I can assure you the transformation has been enormous in as much as it will not be very easy to quantify in terms of uh, development what we have achieved but if you look over the years from the time we, we started to the current time we have really made giant strides and uh, we are going to dwell on centenary projects we are going to do uh, our flagship programs like uh, the storytelling uh, told in, in centenary version, our music, our dances will also reflect themes that harbor on the centenary celebration. Every quarter, the National Troop of Nigeria organizes an event which takes place at the National Theatre in Igomu, Lagos. It's open to members of the public. Nice to have you back. I hope the report was enlightening. There are many galleries in Lagos and in other parts of the country, and more are springing up. Another cheering news is that the works of our artists are doing well at auctions. So when I was invited to a forum where the main discourse would be on art auctions in Nigeria, I did go. And here is what I brought back for you. There are artists, art collectors, patrons, curators and journalists. They gathered here for the fourth edition of the Year South Lecture. Dr. Uzioma Onuzulike of the Department of Fine and Applied Arts, University of Nigeria and Suka, delivered a paper titled Art Auctions in Nigeria, Ladders of Progress or Shots in the Artist's Feet. I find that the art auctions have uh, raised the value of our, our work our modern and contemporary art. Uh, the auctions have also exposed our artists beyond the national level and um, it has brought respectability to um, the art profession in Nigeria. People are beginning to appreciate the value of art and artists and uh, beginning to um, appreciate art more instead of looking down on it because they've seen the worth of the art being produced and they have seen the investment potentials as well. The low points actually have been um, about the structures of the auction houses and the, and the way the auctions have been run. For example, I've looked at the issue of rarity. How rare are the works being put on offer? I've looked at the problem that that might create 
if the works that are being put on auction are the works that collectors can easily find in the regular galleries, in time that might whittle down the effect of our art auctions. After the lecture came questions, answers, and comments. Mrs. Kavita Chilaram organizes art auctions regularly. Well, I think firstly, it's been a wonderful experience because I've got to meet all the artists, all the art critics, all the art historians that are involved in uh, art in Nigeria. Um, we have come out as the premier auction house over here. We set up in, 19, in 2008 and we had our first auction in April, basically just um, to create a transparency of price where people would know, you know what a price of a work is, uh, which we have done. We've also been able to create uh, a captive audience for old masters and giving people information about, about collecting and buying old masters. We also have a huge department where we, which we deal with contemporary art as well. So each auction has a mixture of both old masters and contemporary art. She talks about the prerequisite for a work to be considered good for auction. Basically, you know, you have to make your name in a gallery first before you come into auction. People have to know you. It's not our job really to make an artist. So basically, most of the artists that we have coming in are people that are known and represented in galleries. Legends whose works are highly prized speak on the importance of art auctions. Without missing words, um, the windfall of the auction is a, a great encouragement to me and to anyone who is an artist. You know, we, whether, you, whether you like it or not, we are in a country where people celebrate achievement. And then if you're doing a work and uh, suddenly a work that didn't seem to be very important in the society, it becomes very important, it fetches a lot of money. It draws attention to you and it boosts your own psyche. You are happy. Auction, to me, is um, a welcome idea in the life of any professional artist. You know, because um, it, it not only assures the artist of constant exposure of his work, it's also, uh, if I dare say, a source of income for the artists. This event took place at the instance of Omobaye Misi at the Doenshilon Art Foundation, Oyasav. What I normally do in uh, choosing my topics for the Omobaye Misi at the lecture series is to look at topics that are very topical. In other words, that could make a difference in um, re-evaluating and reviewing the development of visual art in Nigeria. Not only that, in providing a body of intellectual materials for um, Nigerians and non-Nigerians. I am somebody that uh, believes very much in the esoteric. And I, f I feel that it is not just collecting or inviting um, art scholars to come to Nigeria to come and study Nigerian art. We should also create a forum whereby people can participate in developing what I think is lacking in my country, and that is art history, uh, art criticism, and historiography. And that's why I want to continue, because eventually I'm going to have to publish these lectures by these different eggheads into a kind of uh, material that will form a book. Um, that will be referred to many, many years from now uh, in how, how, how art evolved in my time and before me and after me. These stakeholders left the meeting with a resolve to sort out grey areas in art auctions in the country. Oyasav says it remains committed to the promotion of Nigerian art and culture. <music>
God will reward you. Now to the report you've been waiting for. 50 years in the life of a man is a landmark achievement. But how do I describe a situation where a man and a woman who have been married for 50 years decide, yes, on their own to renew their vows? <laughs> it happens in the movies, right? Well, it also happens here in Nigeria. It took place at the Assemblies of God Church, 111 Clerk Street, Surulere, Lagos. Take a look. Elder Obogu Kalo and Madam Salami have lived under one roof for 50 years. They have eight children and 28 grandchildren. They walked down the aisle for the first time on the 11th of January 1964 in Abiriba, Abia State. For family and friends, they renewed their vows. I'm going to ask a question now. Who give me this woman to be married to this man? Has this man married this woman well? I care for her. Yes, sir. And the marriage should continue. Yes, sir. Will you continue to love her and not to be angry with her? Yes, sir. <laughs> Always tell her how much you love her. Yes, sir. Calling her by sweet names. Yes, sir. Praise her. Bless her. Yes, sir. And trust your bank account to her care. Yes, sir. <laughs> This ring, this ring, I renew my vow to you. I renew my vow to you. That I'll continue to love you. And I continue to love you. To serve you with my whole heart. To serve you with my whole heart. And give you every support you need in life. And give you every support you need in life. I love her, my wife. In fact, this wife, this marriage was prepared in heaven and brought it down for this earth. So I always ask God, if it's possible when we go to heaven, if possible for us to marry, I will still seek to my wife. The latest and newest refreshed couple. The Bible reading was taken from the book of Psalm chapter 144. In his sermon, Reverend A.G.K. Jim congratulated the couple but decried the rampant breakdown of today's marriages. Some people have come to me and have expressed their deepest regrets at marrying the person they married. And they will say, I never knew he was like that. I never knew she was like that. Beauty is deceitful. The Holy Spirit is telling you, beauty is deceitful. But what can you do about it? You want to enter into the relationship. And you know that God hates putting away. And you will not begin to pray that your partner should die. You can only weep and mourn and suffer so much. But I want to thank God that in the case of the couple we have today, from evidences I've been able to gather, observing them from a distance, from evidences I've been able to gather, observing them at close range, from evidences I've been able to gather, watching them with their children, with their daughters in law, and listening to testimonies from those people, daughters in law, children, some of them, who are very close to this couple. I have every reason to thank God that when they began to discover their nakedness and began to know exactly who they were, by the grace of God, they found out that they were whom they thought they were. Friends refer to the couple as a study in the world of contrasts. It was when he was riding bicycle that he married Salome. And it was when he went to the hospital where his wife put to bed and he packed his yellow bicycle outside. By the time he finished seeing his newborn child and lost mother, when he came out, he saw that his bicycle had been stolen. 
Despite the twists and turns of life, Elder and Mrs. Obogu Kalu have remained in love. Their children see them as role models. I've known them over the years and I've seen the, the genuineness and the genuity of their love. Uh, I can see that they truly, truly love each other and this is something that is very remarkable. And um, for me, I've tried to emulate that, you know, uh, knowing that marriage should be based on love uh, uh, foremost. And um, I noticed also in them that they have this ability, you know, to, to reconcile themselves. Um, so one minute you might see them, you know, having, you know, some kind of uh, misunderstanding, but the next minute you see them laughing over it. So for me, I think that is key, you know, in any relationship. I've seen heated quarrels and I was afraid. And you, 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 you'll be afraid, you find out the people you're afraid for, like that, that they had a heated quarrel, the next day, they are hugging and kissing themselves. And I say, ah, what, what kind of relationship is this? So it dawned on me that being married doesn't mean you wouldn't have differences with your wife or husband. It's being able to resolve it immediately. They resolve theirs within hours, sometimes minutes, but it never goes the next day. If they are still happy with each other after 50 years, then they have the recipe for a good and long-lasting marriage. Have Jesus in your marriage and have a happy home. And another one is have understanding among yourselves. What spoils marriage is third party. It's any little something, this one run to this, the other one run to this. And these people will bring confusion to the marriage. If you know how to handle your misunderstanding inside the house, you discuss. A right word at the right time brings the peace and harmony. A family that prays together, they stick together. You pray together, you read your Bible together, you ask God help for any problem you have in your home. So that's my advice. Younger people now, they want ready-made husband to marry. God can bless two people who have nothing to start with, who have nothing. You see, some of them, the people who rejected me, when I met them for approach of marriage, they said, I'm very small, I don't have money, I don't, I'm not doing a better business, I'm not riding a car, I don't have even bicycle. So why should they come to me? People now are looking, rich people. Uh, already made a house. It's not good. You may fall into a very wrong hand. Who will the love? Uh, when the love is not there, you have just uh, ruined the marriage. It's better to marry with love. The person you love, you, both of you can start together and make the money. If, if, if what God wanted you, God will make a way. Wow, we wish Elder and Mrs. Obagukalu many more years in health and wealth. <laughs> well, that's been our offering this week. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can join us same time for another rich edition. My name is Chioma Okwara. You can watch more episodes of this program on our website, www.artandleisure.com.ng. Love yourself. Love Nigeria. Thank you.